Hello, everyone. Welcome Hi. to another SuperCon Line panel event. I'm Bill DeGeest, and today I'm speaking with someone who has a very impressive resume for anyone of any age, but much less for someone who isn't even hit 20 yet. <laughs> I am talking to Rachel Pizzolato. Did I say your name right? Yes, you said it right. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, one of the co-hosts of Mythbusters Jr., a scientist, an inventor, <laughs> patent pending inventor. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> a writer, a runway model, that <laughs> national champion trampolinist, geez. <clears throat> yep. Crossfire <laughs> activist, and again, Mythbusters Jr. Pretty yep. dang amazing resume there, kid. Thank you. I've been working here <laughs> up since I was small. Yeah. Apparently. Apparently. Yeah. So let's uh let's get into being well as long as we talk about being small. You're actually Back up one sec. There's thing, something I personally want to know. Okay. All right. Pretty dang cool. Okay. Through, uh, what was it? The, it was uh, through MIT, correct? That you got, you had a exoplanet named after you? Yes, sir. What's so that I was, like? I know, right? <laughs> so I went to Broadcom Masters for 2016 and 2017, which is the International Science Fair for middle schoolers. Mm -hmm. And I won the team award. So like every person who goes to Broadcom Masters gets a little planet named after them. Nice. I got it right here. Nice. Here's my little minor planet. MIT granted <laughs> it for me. It's the 33187 Pizzolatto minor planet. Nice. I cherish this piece. Oh, Everyone's well, so good. like, they love it when I show them <laughs> their minor planet because somewhere out there, there is the 33187 Pizzolatto planet. It is. There is. What kind of uh, civilization do you think is on there? Probably nothing. But you know what? <laughs> Odds <laughs> At are. At least it's out there. Odds are. But yeah, it's out there. So it's out there. you never know. Yeah. Hopefully something's living on it and then I can go see it and that would explore. Be amazing. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that would be amazing. Right. All right. So now <laughs> let's back up. Talking about okay. when you're little. Right. You got your start with hands on things, helping your dad build a pool deck mm -hmm. how old were you when you did that uh, i was probably about 10 maybe yeah probably about 10. Yep. why did you just were you watching him and just said hey i'd like to get oh. in on that or did he ask well, you he gave me a job oh really he was like he said you like building let me give you a job and i've always liked building ever since i was like three or four and my dad and my grandpa we built houses so we have like six or seven rental houses where we live. And so oh, yeah. I do like the plumbing, the construction, the electrical stuff. Um, like where he can't fit, I go in the plumbing section and I like <laughs> hammer it out. He tells me what to do. I'm like, all right, dad, what, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. All right, I got it. We're good, we're all good. Right, so I'm his little, you know, handyman. Handy woman, wow. might I correct. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I was probably about uh, 10 when I first built my pool deck. And it was a big accomplishment for me because I did everything myself. All he had to do was supervise me, provide me with the wood and the tools. And I was like, dad, I'm going to do this all by myself. I want this task and I want to have like a mission. And that was my mission. I'm going to get this pool deck good. I'm going to get it great. Right. And so I started working on the wood. I started cutting it all out. I was like, dang, okay, <laughs> Rachel's kind of capable of this. And so it finally came out really, really well. I actually used a jig. So like I have an example, something like this, where there's automatic pilot holes cut into it. And so anytime that I would need to drill something, I would put it up, drill it in. And so there would be no mess ups. Nice. And so that was my first big accomplishment. He watched me do it. And he was like, A plus. Cool. I got an A plus. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Well, you said you always you were always interested in building. Mm -hmm. Did the science go along with that? Were they kind of hand in hand, or did the the kind of engineering part of building increase your interest in science, or how did that work for you? Hmm. So I mean, science is kind of like 
always been a part of my life, especially STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, all part of science. It's not like one specific area. I like the engineering part. I like the studying part, chemistry, lab work. It really just depends on like what the topic is. And then I'll decipher if I want to do it or if I want, if I don't want to do it. But I would say mostly engineering and science does technically impact you being an engineer, especially sure. if you're going to be an aeronautical engineer, which I want to be. And so there's a lot of trial and error and data testing and collecting. So that's a big part of STEM and science. So I would say they co-parent, you know, they go hand in hand. Right. So. How old were you when you won your first invention award? Hmm. So I was eight years old when wow. I, <laughs> I went to the Junior Olympics for trampoline and I was on my way to California and I saw these tumbleweeds right outside of my car and I was like, that's a lot of wind. Like they were moving, they were speeding <laughs> faster than the car. And I was like, wow, that's a lot, a lot of wind for such a tiny little thing going across mm -hmm. the street. And then we passed I-10 and this is where it all sparked. I saw the big old wind turbines, the horizontal wind turbines mm -hmm. out in the wind farms. And I was like, holy cow, tumbleweed, wind turbine on the side of the road. It can act the same. So my first science fair project was when I was in sixth grade, um, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's like when this whole idea kind of happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I decided to build a vertical axis wind turbine out of junk, you know, cardboard, whatever I could find on the street, duct tape, of course duct tape, I mean. Well, yeah. What else, what else do you have? <laughs> glue, super glue, and some motors, a 3D motor. And so I was like, you know, this is just an idea that I have. It can possibly go somewhere. I didn't know that it would go to Broadcom Masters. It was such a surprise. But I built the wind turbine, passed it with a car, and I was like, holy cow, you can actually produce unlimited electricity when a car is going this way and when a car is going this way there's an unlimited amount of wind going by those blades right. i was like that's unlimited electricity that's so cool so <laughs> that all sparked my interest in wind turbines and this is a six-year progress project like a full almost patented project yeah and then this led into my other scientific inventions so i mean that's really what sparked my science projects that wind turbine all Thanks. right cool yeah, that, <laughs> you know it's one of those things it's, when someone tells you about it well why why haven't we done that before right that, it's that's... so simple yet people don't think about it until right. that one moment i'm like no one thought about this but it's right in front of you exactly one yeah. little thing can spark your inspiration real quick and to change the world as a matter of yeah for sure and let's hope this does. I hope this is it's a hopefully I can get a patent on it. That like I have three patent pending inventions, so hopefully I can get patent pendings on all of them or patents on all of right. them, and then we can move forward with that. Because I don't want to like finish the product and then it gets rejected and then I have to make right. it better. I just want to do right now what I have, the idea. I want it to be patented so that I can make it better and then sell it sure. or not sell it, just make the world a better right. place. Yeah, huh? yeah, it'd be amazing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> You now you you uh, you live in New Orleans, yeah. Um, and that's what's the uh, where you won the three in a row. What's that competition where you won that? So I won the Greater New Orleans Science and Engineering Fair three times in a row, which I don't think that's ever been done. If it has, good for you, person. <laughs> but <laughs> but I'm um, claiming that title. <laughs> <laughs> but I claim that title three years in a row. And I'm so grateful for it because, you know, the second year you win it, you're like, can I get a third? And then you're on your third year. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. They have to give it to someone else. But then your project is just that good. Like, it's such a good project that they have to give it to you. And so oh, yeah. I got the third. Do you have any of those with you? Any of those projects? I do. They're right up there. So this is my brother's room and I transformed it into mine. So <laughs> they're like chilling up there. But I'll grab them. In a bit. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Whenever you want. Whenever you want to start okay. showing more stuff off. Jump in any time. More stuff. Yay. <laughs> uh, so let's. You're, you've been doing the inventions, been doing the science fairs, doing all that stuff. 
how did Mythbusters Junior come about? Was that, yeah. was there an audition process? Did they come to you? How did you find out about it? <laughs> so I would say that I have a very outgoing personality for no. a 16 year no. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, but I've been doing pageants since I was like ooh, four, maybe even younger, maybe three. Oh, really? And so speaking on stage in front of a crowd, you have to do the interview and it's in front of everyone. And so it really does build your confidence. So I would say that with the pageants and then with doing modeling, especially, mm -hmm. you really build that confidence in order to get in front of the camera and just speak, do what you do, do right. what you love. And so I've been doing tons of auditions for different types of TV shows and even little things around my neighborhood and area. And I think they just saw my YouTube channel because um, I posted the pool deck video and wow. it got like four or 5,000 views. So one day my dad never answers his calls, like literally ever. If you ever try to call him, no, never going to work. He's a typical dad. And so for about three months, ooh, those are my eight dogs. I worked at a, a, uh, an SBCA, so oh, nice. I rescued the dogs. Anyways, nice. <laughs> um, over those that's three months. Then. As long as right, very, it's going to be very loud. Sorry about that. That's, that's not a problem. <laughs> Anyways, my dad ignored all of his phone calls for about three months. No one could contact him. And so one day, the producer finally got a hold of him, and he was like, do you know that you are the hardest person to get a hold of? And I was like... You should have answered your calls. And so that one day he was like, get on a Zoom, get on FaceTime, let me interview you before you hang up because I know that you're gonna think this is a scam, but it's not. So I don't know where they found the phone number, but they got in contact with me after three months of trying really, really hard. <laughs> and then we finally did the Zoom and the interview and they saw that I work with different types of experiments, science projects, I did the building aspects, I could speak, did that thing and on to San Rafael, California, I was. I just went, did my little casting, and I got in, wow. along with my other cast members, yeah. Allie, uh, why can I not think of her name? Jesse, why can I not think of my cast member name? This is so weird. Oh my goodness, because I haven't seen them in so long. But we keep in contact. We keep in contact. What? We're such good friends, I swear. I believe you. Hey, I have no reason to person. doubt. Mm -hmm. Elijah. Valerie. Oh my God. There it is. <laughs> there it so is. that would have been in 2018 when you, yeah. when you filmed it? Okay. That was two years ago. And then it aired 2019 in January, I think. But there was yeah, last 10, year. 10, 11 episodes? It was 10 episodes. 10 episodes. And each Mythbusters, each Mythbuster was in one episode each. So Okay. I was in all 10. They were in all 10. We kind of switched back and forth. Right. There was two experiments, two different, two di two yeah. different myths per episode. And two different experiments the per thing. Yeah. So yeah, we all got our little time in each right. episode, right. which is fun. Is there uh, any talk of it coming back, do you know, or can you talk about that or? Um, so far it is discontinued. Okay. But in the future, they were talking about collaborations and doing other like knockoff series and yeah. doing it on different channels, such as the Discovery Channel instead of Science Channel. So there is a possibility of Mythbusters Jr. coming back and all the other cast members like Jamie and like the older ones, oh, yeah. they could possibly come back in a new series. So oh, they're kind of cool. like keeping it open well, they're yeah. get, getting the public into it. Well, so, that would yeah. be cool, yeah. Well, there's mm -hmm. so many, and then geez, there's so many platforms now something can yeah, go to. Yeah, for sure. So, that'd be, mm -hmm. yeah, so that'd be incredible. What, of all the myths that you were personally involved with trying to bust, what was, mm -hmm. well, what was the one overall that was just your favorite to tackle? Hmm, I liked duct tape tires. I loved it so right much. Right out of the gate. We love duct tape tires. We love duct tape around here. Very we probably episode, did, I don't know, like, uh, like almost 400 rolls of duct tape oh, for wow. four <laughs> tires. And so, you know, we had Jesse, Cannon, me, and Adam on the test. Mm -hmm. And so Jesse, we got the mechanic. He did the car. Cannon, he did how many rolls of duct tape you will do. And he got to drive his first car, which yeah. was crazy because he's like 12. <laughs> that was insane. I also got to do a little test drive. And I called her uh, uh, 
lady park lot or something. It was so cute. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, it was probably my favorite because once we got at the um, driving range, it was like, do what you do, do whatever you want. Adam got a hold of the wheel. He went nuts. He went probably about a hundred miles an hour. We were safe, but it was such a good time. It was like being on a roller coaster. So Jesse and I were in the back. We had a, a tin of water and we were seeing how good these duct tape tires will be when, you know, we get out the car and how much water there's going to be. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> with Adam in the seat, there was none. There was literally no water left. <laughs> so <laughs> he kind of damaged the tires, but with Carson or Cannon, there was a good amount of water left. So that was like the breaking points where we're seeing if the duct tape tires were better or could be a viable substitute for regular tires, mm -hmm. which they can. Well, that was fun. <laughs> there you yeah. go. Oh my God. Wait, wait. And then Jesse did donuts. Oh my goodness. I loved it so much. They didn't put it in the video, but he did donuts with the duct tape tires and it was mm -hmm. so much fun. It was smoke. Oh my God. I loved it. I loved it. Did that shred them up pretty good when he did that? Or Oh, yeah, for sure. They were gone. Like, <laughs> off the rim. Gone. Annihilated. <laughs> nice. Is there anyone in, well, I'm, you know, obviously you learn things for whatever you, whenever you do mm -hmm. something like that, but there's, was there any particular one that you learned a new skill set that you really were happy that you, you learned that, like welding or something? Mm -hmm. Um, I would say it would be a skill. I would say more of like, a motto because for me I don't know growing up I would just think like success 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 like you have to like be this type of person but when I was on the set they were saying failure is always an option mm -hmm. and I was like why do you say that like what is the point of that and they were saying when you fail you can learn from that and I was like that is such a good motto that is now my motto and I live by it like right now to this day so that is the main thing that I learned from Mythbusters. If you fail, you can learn from it, do it better. And that's just what the future holds. So that was the breaking point. Yeah, that is what I needed to hear in that moment. Nice. So, yeah. yeah, that's a good, that's a, yeah. And that's about the best way to learn is failure. Yeah. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah, that's, yeah, that's cool. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, the one I don't know why I think it's just the weirdness of it because I had never heard this idea before is the whole making mayonnaise in a in a lightning storm thing. Mm -hmm. I what? <laughs> I didn't even know that was a <laughs> thing. <laughs> I have no clue. Okay, so if I was on that myth, I would be completely lost. I'm so <laughs> glad that the other team was on it because I was like lightning mayonnaise <laughs> what like the correlation between that just didn't match up for me but then i saw the episode and i was like uh okay <laughs> all right i see what you were doing there <laughs> yeah that's uh yeah that was an odd one i <laughs> yeah that was trippy i was like okay i don't know how that's gonna work out but we'll see <laughs> and of course yeah. any any episode that has explosions you know that's always oh for sure <laughs> automatic a plus like if you see an explosion in the title or like if anyone mentions an explosion in an episode, automatically watch it. Exactly. Automatically. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, now I just lost my train of thought. Uh, it'll come back. <laughs> or I'll round, a, I'll round back to it um, if I come to it. Let's see. Uh, is there anything you'd like to d show now or show off or, or do you want to keep going with the questions um, or, or do you want to save that to the end and you can just go through some of the stuff? Yeah, let's just, let's just do right. it. Let's just go for it. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, okay. I'll ask you some more questions then. Um, okay. You, uh, you've gotten into cosplay. I, yeah. I see. Uh, I've seen the Rosie the Riveter and the Catwoman, both awesome, yeah. by the way. Uh, there you go. You, you already it. know it. You already know it. <laughs> Gotta show off the drip. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, this year has been a little difficult since the, yeah. the convention season has uh, not quite been there. We're doing things like this, oh, but that's sad. Uh, what what motivates you? Motivated you to start doing that? Just just because it looks fun, and it is. Um. Well. 
Okay, so Adam does these like one day builds and then mm -hmm. he does the cosplay things. Yeah, I'm testing. So I would say he was like one part of my motivation. I saw his like, what was it? He was, he was uh, Chewbacca yes. and then oh, Iron Man. Awesome. And I was like, oh my God, that is freaking amazing. <laughs> and so that was one part of my motivation. And then there was another part, I don't remember, but some lady came up to me and she was like, you would be the best cosplayer. You have the facial structure and like the body, the height, because I'm almost 6'1". So, you know, that's wow. like a character type of body. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, you got the look. And I was like, mm, cosplay? Mm, okay. And so I decided to try it. I don't remember her name, but she definitely motivated me. Um, so, you know, I started Rose of the Riveter. And I would say that... Rosie is such an inspirational person. I went to, um, I don't know where it was. I think it was the Rosie the Riveter Hotel. And I went on top of the roof and there was like a little party. And okay, so everyone thought that I was like the person that they paid to oh. go there to like play the Riveter right. person. I was yeah. like, I'm, I'm just here, okay? <laughs> and so everyone was, was taking pictures in front of me and they're like, you should definitely dress up as Rosie more because you would get so much more attention. I was like, all right, that's cool. I love Rosie. And then I went to my first Comic-Con and I was like, you know what? Let's spice that up. I love Catwoman. Absolutely adore her. Love the fit, love the outfit, the ears, the heels. Oh my goodness. The attitude. Oh, I would die for Catwoman. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Period. But um, I decided to go for Catwoman because why not? You know, go big or go home. So I got in my six inch stilettos, all the way <laughs> knee high boots, leather, my little leather suit, my cat ears, and I strutted. I strutted myself nice. all the way through that convention, <laughs> got pictures, everyone was complimenting me, and I was like, yes, I love this. <laughs> and so right from that moment, I was like, yep, this is it. This is what I like to do. I like dressing up, becoming a character, cool. even if it's a hero or a villain, I like being right. someone that I'm not and just going out in the world, putting on a wig or something, you know, something crazy and doing what you love to do, which cosplay is definitely something that I love to do. I wish I would have been more into it when I was like a kid, but I never realized it. I never right. realized how powerful a cosplay can be. Right. And when you go to conventions and you're in costume, Everyone there is there because they love this kind of stuff. So they're so appreciative of good costumes. Yeah. Even a weird or bad. Last year at Supercon, there was a guy who was Megatron from the Transformers, and he made it all out of cardboard boxes, mm -hmm. and it was amazing. It right. was amazing. So it's right. just, yeah, it's just so fun to see what ideas people come up you with. You just and, let your creativity yep. go places and just be in front of people who like to see yeah. what you create. Yeah. And you it's can go always, crazy. <laughs> always nice to be a different person once in a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just one day or maybe a little bit more. <laughs> but the rosy one's a good thing to start out with because it's such an iconic mm -hmm. image. Yeah. It's, and it, it isn't a complicated costume either. Yeah. No, no, no. You just put an overall on, go yep. with your little bandana. Do you. Yeah. Immediately recognizable. So. Yeah. Yeah. But so are you thinking of going further into say, are you going to stick mainly to uh, fabric costumes or you want to expand into like the big, um, big makes with foam wings or whatever or shoulder pads? And or do you want to get into mm -hmm. that stuff too? Um, I would say for right now, I want to do simpler costumes, more mm -hmm. like um, I've never like built weaponry or anything. So I would have to learn that over time, right. but I definitely want to create something of my own like a, a specific weapon or like so I was thinking about Electra. Mm -hmm. I feel like Good she choice. would be so bad ass oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Good having choice. the Good swords choice. the double swords Ooh, pull it out red <laughs> heels oh my goodness oh my goodness see like simpler ones characters that I can mimic but I'm also creating a signature comic character I don't know where it's gonna go but it's going to be called, you know, something close to Rosie the Riveter, because my name is Rachel, like Rachel the Riveter or something like that. You know, something iconic. And it could be simple. It could be dramatic. I don't know. But just create your own comic book character. So that's, like, cool, the thing cool, that I'm cool. going for right now. Yeah. Nice. It can evolve in the future. Well, yeah. All right. Well, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, 
that's the, just the creativity in general. Uh, one thing I like is seeing stuff that you're interested in and stuff that you work with. You 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 are really passionate about encouraging that kind of curiosity and dream following in kids. And is that, mm -hmm. it's just, well, it's a great thing to have. Uh, why is that so important to you? Is it just based on your own experiences as a child, being able to express yourself like mm -hmm. that? Or? So I was fortunate to have two parents and a good household, you know, good income, whatever. I was solid. And at my school, there are some kids that are not, mm -hmm. and especially the littler ones. And so right when I was doing the science fair projects, this, this story kind of hits home. Um, I went against some girl. She was like, I don't know, 12 years old, and I was 14. So it was not a, a fair difference, but she was a little bit younger. And when I won, I saw her cry, and I was like, no, 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 no. I immediately went over there, gave her a hug, and I was like, let's take a picture. Let's, let's do something that warms your heart. Let's do something. And so I cried, I got rid of the tears and I was like, just smile and think of happy thoughts. And then I pulled her over to the side and I was like, you are worth it, girl. Do not let any of this phase you. This won't even matter later in life. Just do you be confident, be your best self. And that's all that matters. And from there, she followed me on Instagram and she texted me and she was like, your words really inspired me. And so I was like, oh, nice. oh, oh God. I was like at the point of crying. And, uh, and then she started right her, the field, as they say. I know she started her <laughs> other science fair project and she won. Nice. She told me immediately. And I was like, ah, it's so good. I told you not to give up and you listened to me. And she was like, I owe it all to you. I was like, oh my God, chills, goosebumps, literally goosebumps right now. <laughs> anyway, and then I went to uh, different science experiments and I just, or not experiments, um, like conventions and mm -hmm. especially the, um, the, like the kitty conventions. I love going to those and just right. trying to make someone's day. Honestly, yeah. I feel like one kind word to one kid can make all the difference in the world. Even if it's they're having a bad day or if they're having a great day, still make them smile, make them laugh and just tell them that they can do anything that they dream of. Like dreams are not impossible to make. Anything that you dream of, you can possibly do it. You can shoot for the stars even. Come on, go to space. <laughs> yeah. And it's dream important it. it's important to get kids to know that too because at first they don't they don't have the limitations in their head yeah. until they're imposed mm -hmm. on them. So mm -hmm. to remind them, you don't need those limitations. No. You're only limited by so physics. What? That's, yes. what, that's what yes. you're limited by. Yes. And there's not mm -hmm. a lot we can do about that yet. So, but who knows? <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, that, that's oh. great. I love that though. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's, and yeah. I, and also, you know, going to that point too, I was just having a conversation about this, how, you can, you don't always know the impact you've had on someone. And exactly. because it might just be the simplest thing, like just being nice to someone, which I never, mm -hmm. I don't understand people that go out of their way to be cruel or to be a jerk or whatever. Because it, it doesn't cost you anything to be nice. And that just tiny act of kindness in, during the course of someone's day could make their week. You don't know that. And to you, it's but because it's, yeah, it's not, you know, it's just, hey, that's just what I did. But then right. maybe years down the line or maybe never, but that person will always remember that, that kindness. And you can that make courage. such a huge impact. Yes, <sighs> exactly. And that's, that's, and even again, if you never, even if you never know, it's, it's still nice to think that you have those impacts. For sure. Yeah. I don't see the point in being cruel. What does that get you? I, in, Absolutely nothing. Right. Right. Nope. I mean, you know, I'll give as good as I get to someone, you know. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, 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 no. But I mean, if you are deliberately cruel to exactly. someone and you're bullying them, there's no point in that. Right. What are you getting? You're the bully. Come on. Mm -hmm. Like, later on down the, the road, they're going to kick your butt. Exactly. And also mm -hmm. going, <laughs> going back to the, to like, STEM and things like that, too, mm -hmm. giving, giving kids a creative outlet. 
whether it's that mm-hmm. kind, whether it's what, whatever their, their brain goes towards, whether it's a more of an artistic endeavor. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of crossover in that stuff too. You need to, you know, if you're a sculptor, you need to have some idea of physics on, you know, and how to get your yeah. armatures right and things like that. And, and, you know, so there's so many, but it's just any good creative thing for a kid to have an outlet is, is yeah. never, never exactly. a wrong way to go. So, mm-hmm. yep. And your eventual goal is to be an aerospace engineer, as you said earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So within that, are you hoping to go to space? Okay, so I heard that NASA just doesn't let anyone go to space, which I think is horrible. <laughs> we need to democratize that, that's for darn sure. <laughs> for darn sure. Um, but I think, you know, if you want to go to space, go for it. Like, mm-hmm. what's stopping you, NASA? Come on, <laughs> come on, they can make a little exception. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> just being able to work for NASA or any other aerospace company, oh, literally my dream. I just want to build the aircraft that go into space. I want to have a hands-on experience. I want to learn what's inside of those aircrafts because it's so crazy. There's so many wires. There's so many controls. How do you propel yourself into space? Don't even get me started on that. I have no clue. Like, I have a clue. I know what happens, but, like, think about it in your head. These people are actually, like, out of this world that's crazy that's crazy my mind blown (laughs) absolutely blown well now there's there's so many more options to where people could go with that career too because you don't just have the Mm -hmm. government agencies there's the Mm -hmm. there's the private industries that are doing it now too that our 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 government agencies rely on now to (laughs) to get supplies up to the international (laughs) yeah exactly and and so yeah, there's there's so many avenues to go, but it's yeah, space is it's uh it's infinite. It's <laughs> it's infinite. You can go ahead and explore do, whatever. And go into the just you know, your face. Let's see, if I drive two hundred miles that way, I'll be in a different state. But if I go two hundred miles up there, I'm in space. Right. <laughs> That's crazy. And, yeah, it's a wild thing to think about. So, it's wild, yeah. Yeah. But it's yeah, it's pretty it's pretty amazing. Um. <laughs> Mind blown. Well, we're about halfway point, so we want to start getting into into some of the stuff you want to show off here. For sure. Okay. okay. Like 16, 2017, 2018. So yeah, grand awards. We got 2016, 2017, <laughs> and whoa. <laughs> And 2018. Mm-hmm. Nice. I'm so proud. So proud of myself. Be. Thank you. That's a very impressive accomplishment. Just one is impressive, but yeah, I was so excited when I won the first one because I mean I was like 12 years old winning the grand award over these seniors. I was like, no way! What? <laughs> but yeah, it was crazy. It was such a crazy experience. Were those uh, associated with the uh, wind turbine project too or were those different? Mm-hmm. Yeah so I did the wind turbine project and then um, I actually did like four years of that wind turbine project and then I went into high school and now I'm doing helmet technology and so I'm trying to reduce or possibly eliminate CTE which is chronic traumatic encephalopathy and that's like repeated head trauma and so I incorporated linear dampers on the side of a face mask so like the face mask is not attached anymore. Okay. And so when you get hit from head on, it the hits trans- your right. your helmet first and then it impacts your face. It doesn't impact everything at once. Right. So it slows it down and reduces your head head trauma. That's pretty <laughs> okay. So yeah. I just back up a second. When you okay. said and then I went into high school after accomplishing all this other stuff already. <laughs> I don't well, want people get I to say like- that. When I went into high school, I was like, yeah, you know, what have I done? I mowed that one. Well, people are different. (laughs) But guess where you are? You're interviewing me. You're doing what you do. (laughs) There we go. Supercon. Woo! There we go. All right, moving on. All right. And then we got, so um, as I was talking about with the, um, the helmet project, this was 
the first ever Tulane Brain Institute award given. And so um, they've never found anyone like, you know, not good enough, but a project that stood out like specifically brain injuries. And so I was talking about, you know, head trauma, concussions, and Tulane decided that it was a good idea to give me the first ever Tulane Brain Institute Award, which I am so grateful for. I am so grateful for this. And it's for the outstanding project in the field of neuroscience for the Greater New Orleans Science and Engineering Fair. And that was this year. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And let's see. That is the, this was second place overall. So not first place, but <laughs> second place in the senior division. <laughs> so, well, I hate to break it to you. Enough. You can't win everything. Can't win everything. Failure is always an option. <laughs> exactly. You can always get better. Go back to that. We got second place. We got the Brain Institute Award. And let's see. Oh, yeah. Minor plant when I was in Brockton Masters. And I have tons and tons of awards in my, I have two rooms, in my other room <laughs> that I just cannot, like, explain all of them. I got trophies and tiaras and stuff like that. So, yeah. And then the rest of the stuff here is Mythbusters. We got our little Mythbusters here. And it says, failure is always an option at the bottom. Yes. I'm rocking the Mythbuster shirt. And then we got our little Mythbuster swag swag. And then, oh yeah, okay, so right here, 3D printer. Yeah, as I was saying, this is my first like ever 3D printer. And so I've never really made anything before. <laughs> um, but I went to Maker Fair and I met Joseph Prusa. And I was like, all right, he makes Prusa 3D printers. Mm -hmm. And so I was saying, so I need all this different like technology. I 3D printed my wind turbine technology using SLA. So that was super duper expensive for me, like probably about $7,000 for those wind turbines. So as you can tell, I'm very dedicated to my projects and I'll go to That's any good. lengths to get it perfect. That's so good. I had those 3D printed wind turbines and I decided, you know, it is time for me to get a 3D printer because I cannot, you know, I cannot make these designs and then have them printed professionally and have them messed up because if they're messed up, you can't go back. Right. So I decided to talk to Joseph Cruz and I was like, if you have anything um, like a 3D printer that you would recommend or, you know, just talking to him back and forth. And then he was like, hey, we have this old 3D printer that we can ship to you. And we got some old filaments, whatever, so that you can you know, test it out, do whatever you need to do just for prototypes. And I was like, that is perfect, perfection. And so got the email address, whatever, sent it to me. And I was like, how do you do this? <laughs> <laughs> so it probably took me, I don't know, two or three days to like finally set it up because, oh my goodness, when I tell you it was impossible to learn how like this little knob worked and like where the cables went. <laughs> oh, I feel so shameful for saying, I don't know where the cables went. But in all honesty, I do not I don't know where the cables went. I barely even know how to change the filament. But with trial and error, let's see. I don't know if you can see this, but I created yep. a little Prusa thing. That was like my first successful print. Um, I've been having a lot of failures with this because the nozzle is either too hot or the bed's too hot. I don't know, but we'll figure <laughs> it out. And then, and then. Guess what I made? Guess what I made? Let me just like put it on this thing so I can show you. All right, you ready? You ready? Ta-da! That's awesome. So I made this like uh, 45 minutes before I came on here. <laughs> uh, anyways, I explained, I explained a few things. Successful. <laughs> we got it. Yeah. When I said pushing it back 30 minutes, this is what I was doing. <laughs> anyways. We got our first, like, second successful print. I'm happy about that. So yeah, yeah. this is gonna come in a lot of use, and I'm gonna try and make some new prototypes and hopefully, you know, get some new slides for ideas in there, because you never know. You never know what this thing can make. Um, anyways, iconic, right here, iconic. I was Let just, just going to ask you about that. 
<laughs> is that one of the so, ones from the uh, in space no from, from, from the in space no one can hear you scream episode is that from is that one of those yes the iconic symbol of Mythbuster Jr. We had probably about, I don't know, 100, maybe 200 chickens in one basket. And then, oh my God, the funniest thing happened. There's this basket of chickens. And then Elijah jumps in with his whole, like his butt is in the basket. And he goes, <laughs> it was so much fun. Anyways, that is the iconic moment of Mythbusters Jr. I just had to show that off because it's hilarious. Okay, and then we got the Rosie the Riveter. And uh, did I talk about my level headed? No. Go ahead. Oh, yes, sir. Okay, so this is another patent pending invention. Um, it's not done yet, like, not even close, but there's still room to improve. So this is called level headed. And as you can see, my little man, he's kind of cute, whatever, <laughs> doing his thing. Um, so inside of this hat is a circuit playground. And I'm not like the savvy type of person who knows how to code. I know how to do basic Python and I know how to get things done for like a specific purpose. I don't know how to like program a whole computer. No, 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 no. That's gonna take a lot of effort and trial. So, you know, when I need something done, I look up the code, I figure it out, and, you know, go for it, whatever. <laughs> so, basically it? what this does, let me just, <laughs> let me demo it. Here we go. So say you're driving in a car, vroom, skirt, skirt, and <laughs> you are falling asleep. Beep, beep, beep. When the thing's on, it will alert you in your ear and it'll beep and it has little flashing lights up here. So it's called level headed because it keeps your head level when you're driving. Right. It's mainly for truck drivers and everything. Sure. But since my dad and I go on so many road trips, you probably go on uh, like 20 road trips every single year, which is a lot yeah. because we go like cross country. So we do a lot of road trips and this was, you know, inspired by my dad. I was like, bro, you keep falling asleep. I do not trust you. The seatbelt may be, you know, helping a little bit, but if you fall asleep, we're off. We're gone. And so he was like, all right, energy drinks. No, no, no. I'm going to make something for you. So I made him this hat. He wears it every time we go on a long road trip because I do not trust the seatbelt. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Great point. Um, anyways, hopefully this will get um, some better mechanics because it it works it definitely works you know it's just not appealing it's got a little batter in the back you know we yeah. got to make that smoother gotta get the prototypes though so. gotta get the prototypes there though doesn't matter what it looks like as long as it works exactly. so yeah that's about all the stuff that i have to demo <laughs> for now <laughs> all right yeah. that's <laughs> yeah i have i i'll switch us back here I'll say it again, it was about for about the tenth time. Very impressive, very impressive. Uh, you obviously are a hard worker. Not not just intelligent as far as this, but you, you have to be a hard worker to get so much accomplished too. Mm -hmm. No and, sleep. And uh, yeah, I was just gonna ask you. No. Sleep? When, what is that? Yeah, when do you have Who is she? No such thing as downtime in Rachel's world. Bro, there I only sleep in the car before school. If I have a class that, you know, I have a little time afterwards, good night, sure. um, <laughs> before volleyball practice, and then, yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, that's volleyball. Fine. That reminds me. How'd the game go this morning? Oh, yes. We won. Nice. We got some good blocks, some good hits in there. Oh, yeah. Smooth grooving. Excellent. All right. Thank good you. to hear. All right. Well, this is anything else you, you want to bring up right now? Anything coming to mind that you'd like to talk about? Well... Um, as you were saying with the kids, if there are any kids that are going to watch this, then I just want them to know, dream big, anything is possible, and remember that failure is always an option. Very Three good. of my favorite models. Motto. Very good, very good. Models. Mottos. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I do like my social media stuff? Yes, very, yes. And also, okay. just a reminder to everyone that uh, there will be links on this, the individual page for this video 
to all of Rachel's social medias cool. and also elsewhere on the Supercon and Supercon line website. So, but go ahead and give a shout out. All right, then. All right. To yourself. Shout so, out to yourself. Okay. <laughs> you follow my Instagram at Beauty and Brains with a Twist, and then my Twitter at Brain Twist 2112. Uh, Facebook. I don't really have a Facebook because there's a lot of different pages. <laughs> um, and then you can follow my YouTube at Rachel Pizzolatto and my TikTok at Rachel underscore Pizzolatto. Yay! All right. <laughs> Excellent. I've, the YouTube stuff's great. Love that. I Instagram, love YouTube. Instagram stuff's great. Thank you. So I'm starting a new series. It's called um, Science Sundays. And this was um, actually my first Science Sunday. But I have a lot right outside of my house and just no one uses it mm -hmm. so i'm gonna do as many explosions and <laughs> as many like big old things as i possibly can you know fireworks and slingshots and oh my goodness yeah, like awesome. elephant toothpaste ooh, ooh, ooh. okay yeah that's starting up so yeah if any of y'all go follow my youtube channel <laughs> definitely look out for science sundays see how often you can get the cops called on you that's it you know, if they do, I'll be like, it's for the sake of science. Right. Okay? <laughs> right. Well, I didn't know I couldn't do that. I... <laughs> I, explosions? Oh, yeah. I, I thought that was part of the law. I'm sorry. Yeah. No harm, no foul. That's legal. That's, that's, yeah. That's, that's been decided in the Supreme Court, I'm pretty sure. No harm, yes, no foul. Yes, right? yes, yes. Right? I'm a mythbuster. Let me do my experiment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, is, can you think of anything else? Or you think you're okay. not pretty much done? I think we're good. All right. Well, before <laughs> we leave, I'd like to remind everybody about Supercon, the organization. It is a, uh, <clears throat> a not for profit organization that focuses on education through expression of various, what used to be considered the nerddom. So, comic books, anime, uh, <laughs> gaming. You know, all just movies, genre movies in general. Every event they put on is to further that goal of of continuing education and people like that. They're partnered with two other organizations. One is Reach, which is an adult literacy program, phenomenal as well. Um, they uh, they just do good work because it's kind of hard to get along in the world when you can't read. It's just a <laughs> fact of the world. So, uh, but the fact that they go out there and help adults who slip through the cracks for whatever reason, fantastic organization. The other one is JY6, which is uh, a foundation um, dedicated to pushing along research for pediatric cancers and leukemia in general. Um, again, fantastic organization. If you want to help out any of these Supercon itself, they're, they're charity partners, go to the website, investigate some more, see what you think, um, you know, and I obviously times are tough all over, but if you, if it's, if you have it within you and you have the means, you know, please contribute to these organizations. And every event they put on when they have the, they do uh, give comic book giveaways when like superhero movies come out, they go to the theater and give away comic books. And then they, when they have the in-person conventions again, but when they've had those, <laughs> it's an entirely volunteer run. So everyone working there, all the staff, they, all of them volunteered because they're That's passionate. That's crazy. Yeah, they're passionate about this stuff. Uh, I'm kind of an outlier with these guys. I, I live far enough away to where I couldn't be involved in the sausage making as I said elsewhere, um, but I'm friends with the, I'm friends with a few of the guys involved. So uh, uh, I, I, when I offered them whenever I can step in and help out for something, I'll do it. And, and so here we are. So, um, so thank you again very much for being here. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> My this, pleasure. This, this was great. This is, this, I really liked it. I had, I had seen, the Mythbuster Junior before, and just I, I just love that. Story. It's just great. It's just, and again, it's just Thank the kids you. It's just involved. And so our, we'll just go with this to the last point about the kids being involved. Get find 
out what a kid is passionate about and encourage that passion. Science, technology, Preach. engineering, mathematics, STEM stuff, art, whatever kind of art that happens to be. And also anybody can do this. This is not a limited to, to means, whether that's economic or, or location or whatever. Anybody can do this. There's ways to do these things and it should be fully encouraged as much as possible. And that's why it's important that we have people like Rachel around because she's, she's a passionate herself about making sure those kinds of things happen. So, all right. Thank you. Before I get too, too sappy over here. <laughs> no, words of inspiration. It was perfect. <laughs> okay, well, again, thank you so much. I enjoyed this immensely. Um, thank you. It, it just was a heck of a fun time, so we're going to call it. And everyone take care. And wherever you catch either one of us the next time, catch you the next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>